on Worcester News tonight, the city school buses are rolling after drivers come to an agreement with their employer. Plus, a young girl is recovering after being thrown off a bridge into Lake Quinn Sigamon. Today, the man accused of kidnapping her faced a judge. Well, good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. New tonight, an agreement has been reached between Worcester school bus drivers and their employer. It means there won't be a strike this week and the buses will continue running for years to come. Our Brittany Shaver has more on this developing story. The first day of school for Worcester went smoothly. All dressed up and excited to be back in school. But Superintendent Maureen Beninda says they almost had to cancel. We would never have been able to transport our children safely. There was potential for a strike after negotiations between school bus drivers and Durham School Services ended this weekend. But Monday evening, a new development, Mayor Joseph Petty announcing the drivers and the company have agreed on a new contract. In a statement, Petty says this is a good contract for the bus drivers and make sure everyone is focused on the school year ahead. I know a lot of parents are breathing easier tonight and so am I. 48% of students are driven to and from school by bus. Beninda says bus drivers are needed to make the school district function. Everybody that was present today, everybody had a smile on their face, celebrate to meet students too, welcome them back. Even with a solution now, the possibility of a last minute strike had some worried. Many parents like Amy Generelli had to wait until Sunday evening to hear if there was going to be school today. I just think it's ridiculous that they wait until the last minute to fix a problem. And I didn't have childcare for today. So that's a problem for a lot of people that, you know, you can't at the last minute decide not to have school. I think it's important that everyone that works, you know, um, for the Worcester Public Schools feel as though they're appreciated. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. And according to Mayor Petty, Teamsters Local 170 and the Durham Bus Company agreed to a five-year contract. Well, we are learning new information tonight about a seven-year-old girl who survived what prosecutors describe as a gruesome attack. Worcester police say she was thrown from a bridge after being kidnapped by a family friend. Our Rosalind Flaherty was in court when he faced a judge today. Joshua Hubert stands behind a door in Worcester District Court Monday. The 35 year old is charged with kidnapping a seven year old girl from a Worcester home early Sunday morning. Prosecutors say he strangled her and threw her off a bridge into Lake Quinsigamond. The victim had contusions on one of her legs, her forearm and her wrist. She had petechial hemorrhages on her face, scalp, eyes and behind her ears. She had marks on her neck that are consistent with strangulation. Prosecutors say the young girl survived and was able to swim to a Shrewsbury home. A woman in Shrewsbury was woken by knocks at a door and found the seven-year-old victim standing at her door in pajamas soaking wet. Prosecutors say Hubert was a family friend and was attending a cookout at the young girl's grandmother's home Saturday night. Outside of Hubert's home, no trespassing signs were posted. His attorney says he maintains his innocence and kept him hidden in court to protect his identity. And I know some people know him. I, there are other people that may not know him, so I'm preserving all of his rights. Ben Bolter lives on Lake Quinsigamon and says he is shocked to hear something like this could happen. That's a pretty high drop. A lot of crazy stuff happens around here in Worcester, but I, you don't hear stuff like this. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Hubert is being held without bail. He has a dangerousness hearing on Thursday. And tonight we're also hearing from a woman who knows him. Our Cam Jandro joins us now with her reaction. Cam? Anna, the woman I spoke with says she and her family have known Hubert for years and they're in complete disbelief with the charges he faces. Stunned and surprised. Quite honestly, he seemed like a really great stand-up guy. It's the reaction from a woman who knows Joshua Hubert. She didn't want to be on camera, but says she's shocked to hear he'd act that way. He always seemed to be happy, and um, it was really kind of surprising. The woman we spoke with says Hubert coached one of her kids in youth sports. She says she would not have expected the acts of violence he's charged with. He seemed like a really mellow guy. He never was aggressive with the kids. He wasn't loud or overbearing. So yeah, it was quite shocking to hear that he would do something like that. 
Neighbors also surprised to hear the 35-year-old allegedly kidnapped a 7-year-old girl, later throwing her off a bridge into Lake Quinsigamond. It is shocking. It's a very nice area. It's quiet, it's church, schools, parks. It's, it's, it is surprising to me. It's scary because it's close to me, you know, the other house behind me. After seeing photos of the arraignment on social media, this woman says he didn't look like the man she knew. He kind of looked not like the Josh that I normally saw. He looked a little, his eyes were kind of bugged out and he just, he didn't look like the same person to me. Now, the woman says Hubert was a very friendly person, especially around children, and still can't believe the charges. Hubert will be back in court on later this week as he's entered a plea of not guilty. Anna. Thank you, Cam. Well, a Charlton man is arrested over the weekend. State police say he was in the possession of methamphetamine. The state police say 32-year-old Ryan Conti was a suspect in the theft and misuse of a credit card out of Auburn earlier this month. He was arrested Saturday on an outstanding warrant. It was when troopers discovered the meth. They also executed a search warrant at, at a Charlton residence and found Class E pills not prescribed to anyone who lived there. The Worcester NAACP held its monthly meeting tonight using the platform to discuss unity in the community after national events like what recently took place in Charlottesville, Virginia. President Pat Yancey says the message the NAACP wants to promote is to resist against racial hatred and bigotry by certain groups. Yancey says Worcester has a rich history of coming together. This rising of racism um, and sentiments that are being expressed by people who identify with white supremacy and neo-Nazi groups are unacceptable. And, you know, we as a people need to unite and resist against this. The Worcester NAACP is one sponsor for Songs of Hope on September 10th. It's a concert celebrating African American and Jewish music and is meant to be a night of unity and hope. Well, many fire departments across central Massachusetts are made up of on-call firefighters. Few have full-time staff members, and for those who do, say it's still not enough. Now local departments are hoping more people will be encouraged to apply. Our Olivia Lemon has more. I'm trying to do the best job I can with what we have for staffing. Uh, to save people's properties and lives. Spencer Fire Chief Robert Parsons is the only full-time firefighter for the town's department. He says he does his best when responding to calls, but it requires a lot out of him, both mentally and physically. It makes me, you know, feel very anxious and nervous, so what's going to happen during the course of the day? Spencer's department relies on 45 call firefighters. Chief Parsons is hoping more will apply in the future, but he understands the 240 hours of required training like these trainees are going through at the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy can be time consuming. It's a lot, a lot of, a lot of time and effort, but I want to make sure that when I have firefighters showing up to assist anybody, that they're trained. Many other small towns across central Massachusetts are dealing with a similar issue. Sutton Fire Chief Matt Belsito says his department is always looking for more call firefighters. That's difficult in this day and age. Uh, with people working out of town. The Sutton Fire Department is made up of four full-time employees and 39 call members. Chief Belsito says all of the call firefighters have other full-time jobs, making it difficult for them to help respond to fires. You do what you have to do. Um, if we go out the door during the daytime hours and it's a confirmed work and fire, uh, we would call automatic mutual aid. Both chiefs say they hope more people consider the possibility of becoming a call firefighter because you never know when a fire may strike. I truly believe it's, it's, it's in you um, if you want to service the public. Ultimately, if their house is on fire, they want to be able to protect their home, their neighbor's home, their children's homes, or their businesses in town. Ultimately, it comes down to community pride and, and to serve their community. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. The F Spencer Fire Department recently received a grant to hire four full-time firefighters, but once the grant money runs out, it's up to the town to fund the positions. Spencer and surrounding departments will be at the Spencer Fair Labor Day weekend accepting applications for call firefighters.
Well, Worcester's Mercantile Center unveils a new lobby during a ceremony today. After months of construction, a new lobby was unveiled Monday, debuting a new state-of-the-art fireplace. The iconic building making its transformation from Worcester's downtown mall to commercial space. The lobby includes a lunch cafe and a sitting area, a beautiful transformation, and another addition to Worcester's downtown professionals. Well, as people in Texas deal with extensive rain and flooding due to the Hurricane Harvey, we're now getting an idea of the storm's economic impact. First, analysts say gas prices could go up anywhere from 5 to 15 cents this week. AAA spokeswoman Mary McGuire explains it's because oil refineries in Texas were forced to close, leading to a drop in supply. Our question is how soon can those refineries get back online? If they have to suspend operations through the week, for example, we could definitely see an impact in terms of rising gasoline prices here and in other parts of the country. McGuire says she doesn't expect gas prices to rise more than 30 cents, but the increased prices could stay at those higher levels 